Let's have a look at how to take apart and repair the index controllers. You can see this one here, the thumb moves when I push my finger on the stick and does on the pad. This one here, the stick doesn't do anything when you put your finger on it, but the pad still does. So it means that the touch sensor cable is snapped, presumably, inside there. So let's take it apart and see if we can determine the problem and repair it. I've recently, on my other controller, replaced the whole stick and the procedure for taking the controller apart will be the same whether you're replacing the stick or fixing the touch sensor. Let's get started. Here's what you need to do to take apart this top part of the controller. This line here is where this center part will come out and a way, maybe not the proper way to do that, is to insert the flat screwdriver into there and push it down to no, to lift it up. Okay, maybe it differs. The other, my other one just popped right up when I did that. There you go. So it's got to be in, in that angle and there's a clip down there. So now you get your spudger tool or your fingernails lift up the rest of it and be very careful because there's a ribbon cable coming off there which needs to be looked after ah yes there's tape around there as well so you can see that the cable from the touchpad is still attached there and you can carefully wiggle that out like that and just watch because there's a thin bits of double-sided tape around the edge there so now before removing the joystick top just be very careful because there's a ribbon cable that comes from this top bit from the touchpad down the top edge there and onto another part so you need to be very careful to not damage that but we're going to have to take all of this out in order to replace either that ribbon cable or the stick part itself and to do that you need Torx screwdriver. So you need a T5 screwdriver and we'll start with being very careful because there's a spring there for this the hand strap adjustment thing. So we want to loosen that off just a little bit. Then we need to get that spring out. Pay close attention to how it is installed there so that you can put it back at the end See that's been now lifted off so that can come out. Use your nice fingernails to get that out. Put it aside. And then we'll take these two screws out. These ones are self-tapper style screws and they must go back into those positions. So that slides out. Now we need to lift this thing here, which I don't know what that is, which can be done by prying it up very slightly, very carefully from the where the connection goes in like that, so it pops off, and so there's double-sided tape on the bottom of that, and that can just hang there out of the way. It can be unplugged there with a very tiny plug, and so that now exposes a screw that needs to be undone. That's a non-self-tapper style machine screw. That centerpiece comes out and then the strap adjuster thing comes out. Yes, that piece just slides into there. Just keep that together. Now we've got one, two, three more screws to undo. Like machine screw type things. Alright, so that's all the screws undone. So now this assembly is loose. So it can be lifted up, but we need to undo some cables. You can see again there's a cable coming off there, but there's also a very large one coming up from the bottom there. So you need to get your fingernail into there and just pop that off like that. And then for this other one, 
start pulling on it, lift up the little flap thing there, little black part. It should just slide out very easily. All right now we're getting down to business. So now if you're replacing the the stick, you could probably do it like that, but you probably would want to take off this the next layer to get the other things out of the way. So for that there are three more screws. These are tiny ones that are slightly different to the others. Now there's another ribbon cable there to undo by lifting up that little white bit at the back. And now that will slide out. And then there's a ribbon cable here to undo. A little white bit lifts up and then the cable slides out. So now the button top assembly whatever that's called comes away from the main board the membrane part of the keypad which seems to have a little arrow on it indicating up presumably that can come out so at this point now you're ready to replace the stick so you need to get out your very high quality or your very high performance uh, desoldering tool because you're going to need it Something like that, but hopefully newer than this vacuum desoldering tool. I'm going to feed a lot of leaded solder into all of the stick connections, give them a good sucking, and then you have to do that a few times, feeding more lead solder in so that it soaks all the way through to the other side of the board, and we'll let you suck out the whole solder barrel until you can see light through it and wiggle each pin as you're doing it make sure they stay wiggly and then the stick assembly will come out and you can solder in a new one and then put it all back together if they come from aliexpress they're pretty cheap or ebay or probably amazon i think that's the part number of it so there's another new one so i replaced the one in my other controller um, a couple of days ago because that had a problem where it wouldn't return to zero on the up and down movement and yeah put in the new stick put it all back together everything's good this one didn't have a problem with the touch on that so that still doesn't have a problem but in this case on this controller the problem is the touch on this thing so presumably it's that ribbon cable has been pinched it does seem kind of sharp bent there I'll have to investigate this and work out what can we do about it. Very delicate assembly. So somehow it's got pinched and you see it's kinked there. I don't know if I can pull all this stuff out to make it easier to work on. Oh, it looks like you can. Okay, so that's the touch board assembly. It's got tape on it. Hold to hold it down. Does it say there what it is? It's called a multi cap sense left. There so must be a slightly conductive plastic here. So there's tape on both sides of this, which is supposed to like bend and not break. I'm gonna peel that off and see if I can see where it's broken. I guess it's broken right there. Does appear to be the case. All right. So it's snapped, yeah, the, uh, the board is very hard to see, but you can see there the flex board is snapped. So that's the reason why it doesn't work. And so what we could do is try very carefully to scrape away the outer layer of the flex board and then solder a wire onto it and then do the same at the other end, the joystick end work out which side it's closer probably doesn't matter and then we're going to somehow expose the conductive part in here and solder a bit of wire between them without ripping that out I don't know if that comes apart anymore because it would be nice to solder a wire up inside there but yeah, I don't know if that comes apart anymore any or any further yeah, so it might not be possible to do a long-term fix on this because you end up like 
a little bit of wire is still going to get pinched and damaged. Okay, that's peeled apart. It all comes down to now being able to scrape that open. I wonder if some good side cutters could do that. Side cutters that I bought some time ago just for this occasion. Good stuff from Japan. Okay, so we'll try and scrape that off without destroying it. I wonder if we could also melt down to it. Okay, just rip it off. Yeah, maybe it's too difficult to get to. I'll pause for a moment and see if I can expose this stuff. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Unless you can get it apart, I think it's probably not possible to fix the the touch sensor because yeah, I can't get the the outer coating scraped off. Like what you could do, what you could do for the um, for the board end is. There's a whole bunch of test points there which probably correlate with the touch input plug connector. If they did, then you, which I haven't tried metering out, because I can't do anything about the other end. But if you could solder onto this end somehow, I don't know what's in there. I need a sacrificial one to chop apart to see what it actually does when it goes in there, and I don't want to destroy this one. Solder a wire onto a test point, which you find it, it's pin one. Pin one on that. So by measuring from there, let's see, maybe it goes to a test point, in which case you can solder a wire on there, then bring that up to where the stick is. That's probably the only way, but if you can't join it to the stick end, then that's also a bit of a waste. So in that case, yeah, this is how you replace the stick. You desolder it, put a new one in. That's good, but if we can't get a new... Um, flex board for the touch then yeah I don't know if it's possible to fix that maybe people a lot more clever than me can work out how to do it but yeah unfortunately I have to think about that maybe another time I'll come back with a solution and but in the meantime I still want to use this so we're gonna have to put it back together so we've got to get ribbon tables in I don't know if we need to screw this thing down first before putting those cables in or not. So just turn the screws back a little bit until they click into place. Ideally, if you can feel where that is, so that um, you're not cutting a new thread. When they drop in, then you know it's hit the thread that it came out of. You do not want to be cutting new threads into plastic because a few times of that and the thread will be gone. There won't be enough material left to hold the screw in and then you're going to have problems okay so we've got all these fiddly little flexes to put back in fly flexes make sure they're seated all the way then push down the little thingy probably need to get some tweezers for this tiny one yes it's not very cooperative the tweezers aren't particularly high quality, which isn't helping. Okay, there you go. So that's now seated in there. Put down its little flap. Okay, so I think we're done on this part. Now we're going to get that back into here. And so to do that, first off, we'll join up that this cable here. So it goes this way, so that lever's still up. So pull that out straight, carefully. Plug it into there, push down the little flap. Now this one here is the tricky one, because that cable is not very long, and you need to have it perfectly aligned with the thing that it goes into. Is there anything else I need to do first? No. So that needs need to get it hold in the right position. go clicked on now we can set all this board back down into here and we've got these screws with the fine thread on them three of those there's something not else there's something else not done yet that's no, fine it's just that the yeah, it wasn't quite pushed all the way down. 
a bit of that stuff. Yes, so unfortunately you couldn't solder through, I tried soldering through the flex, didn't work, it's not good, it doesn't want to know. Let's try scraping it and it ends up just ripping. Tried scraping it in a different way using a sharp knife, just ends up ripping. So I'm not sure, maybe someone clever can tell me what the technique is for exposing the contacts of a flex board without destroying it. Okay, so now we've got this this assembly here for the uh, grip thing to go in. On that, oh, it keeps falling off as it pushes in. So it goes in there. Okay, it's in. Then this little thing goes on top, and there's two little locating pegs there to locate it. And then there's a screw that goes in to hold that down. This is what most of the force of your hand being strapped into this thing is going onto that center screw there. Now that little touch sensor thingy can stick that down. Is that the touch sensor thing? I think so. I think so. It goes under that, under the touch pad. Maybe it's a sensor for pushing it. I don't know, it's a thing for doing something. So now, normally this would be attached because you've not broken it yet, or it's a good new one, and... Yeah, so that would have come in with all the other stuff. And you would have been really careful with it and not destroyed it. And so now we get this thing in, the strap. And then two screws for that, which we'll put in loosely at first. So we've got to get that spring on there. Maybe the spring needs to go on first. But again, these are interplastic, so we've got to be very careful to go back the thread a bit to get it in properly. Okay, so now we've got to put that spring in there. And then bend it around under the middle part then we can screw the middle part down with these two screws oops I pushed the button and turned it on yeah be careful about that well I guess at least we know it turns on now if the dongle was plugged in then the green light should come on anyway So that still functions, put it back in your favorite position, and then finally, we'll plug this in, another good exciting ribbon cable, that one just pushes straight in, there's no latch, then you will close it up, in theory, your controller will be all good to go now. And mine is still with a broken touch thing, but anyway. Yeah, I'd have to look around and see if it's possible to get a new flex, touch flex board. Probably not. There you go. Hopefully that's a quick and easy way of getting your index controller apart. And how to replace the stick or the touch sensor board if you can get a replacement one or you're clever enough to be able to fix it thanks for watching i might i know someone who's got one with a damaged stick so maybe i will make another video when i put that in to like supplement or supersede this video thanks for watching see you next time